Hey guys, this is Michael from SAE. Um, today we're going to be going through a tutorial on UV mapping. Okay, unwrapping a simple uh, Coke can. Actually, make it a Pepsi can maybe. Okay. Um, I'll start from scratch, but before we launch into this, I'm just going to explain to you a little bit about UV mapping, what it is, why we use it, and um, how it relates to Maya, Maya 2016. So first up, I'll show you a couple of examples of uh, UV mapped uh, objects. We'll start out with a simple cube. Here we go, very basic cube. And it's uh, a cube on the left here. It's been fully mapped. And um, here you can see the process of unwrapping. They've simply created a couple of cuts along the edges. Okay, and then it's laid out or unwrapped just like unwrapping a present okay so you notice around here there's been a few cuts but there is uh, they haven't created any cuts along these edges now that's important okay you don't want to separate everything you want to try and keep it best you can uh, together this is one piece okay so there's also a reason for using a checker a checker pattern or texture um, it allows the uh, the, uh, the modeler or the texture mapper to actually see if there's any stretching um, or any abnormalities in the actual um, of the texture itself as it's as it's applied to the surface of the 3d object okay you'll see some areas that might where the checker is actually a lot larger and maybe some areas where it's really tiny which means it might be quite pinched or if it's large it's going to be all stretched out all right so let's have a look at another example. Here we go a little bit more advanced. This time the checker pattern it's also coloured to give better reference and it's also numbered for even greater reference so as the uh, the texture artist is able to better ascertain where the texture is sitting um, because ultimately what we're trying to do here is once again we're trying to take a 3D uh, as a texture and turn that into a 2D image by flattening it. Why do we do that? Because the 2D image is what is uh, we're able to utilize in Photoshop because Photoshop is a 2D package. It's a 2D uh, publishing, uh, texturing, painting package. Okay, It does not work in 3D. Now having said that, Photoshop as of I think it was CS3, CS4, I'm not sure, um, it does allow some minor texturing in 3D, okay, but we're working in 2D environment, Photoshop, therefore we need to unwrap our, um, our 3D object first, ready for texturing, okay. Let's have a look at another example. Here we are, now it's more organic with a few curves, Etc. And you might see a little bit of stretching here of the size of comparing the size of this little checker, number two, say to, I don't know, number one or number eight, slightly larger. Let's take a look at another one, more organic again, a hand. And you can notice here's the seam. It's quite prominent, so you really got to take care exactly where you place your cuts. Of course this is more advanced, we're mo moving into organic shapes here. I'm just giving you an overall um, view, overview of the um, texturing within a 3D platform. Okay, here we have a 3D model, quite an advanced model here, but once again it's the same concept. It's that uh, uh, the 3D Refer oh, sorry, a 2D reference image of a checker pattern that's been placed over this uh, 3D model of a girl. And the artist, the texture artist, is looking for any stretching. And this is quite well laid out actually. A bit more compressed down in the feet area, around the foot, compared to up higher. Okay, let's have a look at one more example here. Here we have a armor from a knight, and we have actually some um, IDs. So you can actually see the color ID 
how it refers to each different area. This is obviously the, the plate, the breastplate. Okay, and here's the checker again to give you a good indication of any stretching. And you want that fairly uniform. Okay, the, the actual each little checker cube needs to be approximately the same size. Okay, so um, let's move forward. So uh, what we're going to um, try and do today is um, create a simple uh, Pepsi or a soda can and we will um, create a texture and apply the texture to it. Okay, so I do have a little video um, from a previous um, tutorial that I made and it was there's a texture that I sourced just on the internet I just type soda can texture in images in uh, Google images and I found this texture and I'd already applied it to it and uh, here you can see the texture itself I've got the texture there as well this is inside Maya 2015 but uh, today we're going to be moving into 2016 so there you go. All right. So let's move ahead. Minimize those. Here's our little can. Um, we'll grab the whole can itself. And you know what? We're going to start from scratch. We're going to can this can. And <clears throat> I'm in the modeling menu, the top left. We don't want rigging or animation, rendering. Not at this stage. We're in modeling. What we're really interested in using here is our primitives and the UV tab up here. And in particular, we'll be using the UV editor. But for now, let's create our can. So I'm going to create just a very simple polygon cylinder, third from the left. Click that once. I will use my Alt and left mouse button to navigate and look around it. Alt, I'm still holding Alt and my middle mouse wheel and right mouse with Alt to move in and out. Great, so there we go. Now what I'll do, first I'll scale this, remember W to move the object. First I select the object, right click and go select the whole object. I notice that I'm actually in subcomponent mode here. To get out of that, in the top, these three, that's component, and this one here is select by object. I want to be in object mode. That way I can select the whole object, not just parts of the object. Those two are very important. That's select by object type. That means you're going to select the entire object, and this is going to be selecting sub-object parts. So component mode. We want object. Okay, so what I want to do is scale my can so it's not a bit longer than that, like a real so soda can. So I'm going to hit R and then the top in the Y direction, pull it up a bit, about the size of a can, maybe a little bit more. I'm happy with that. Now I want to go and actually create a bit of a bevel around this really sharp edge here because that does not look anything like a soda can. So I'll right click and I'll go edge, double click that. By double clicking you select all the edges around it. I've grabbed that. Now I'm going to go into not mesh but edit mesh. Come down to bevel. I'll go into the options. These little squares on the side, right side of your menu items are your options. Click that, move it to one side a bit and offset type, fractional, that's great. I want to change my width to point 0.1, for now I'll try that. And I want three segments, not two or not five, three will be fine I think. Smoothing, 30% I'll leave that. I'll hit apply, I won't hit bevel because then if I hit bevel this little window will disappear. But if I go apply It'll stay here, so if I want to undo, I can do it again. So I'll hit apply. Ah, uh, it's not bad. I'll hit Z to undo it. And I'll go maybe 
point zero five. Let's try that. That's a bit better. That's more like a, a can. I'll do the same for the bottom, hey? Come in here, I'll right click. I want to grab the edges. Remember, right click, you go know, edges, vertex, and face. Those are the three that we use. Vertices are your little points. Right click, faces are, of course, polygon faces. Any face. So I want to grab the edge, right click, edge, double click to grab the whole ring. Oh, I could hit apply, but I'll show you what else you can hit, guys. If I hit, I'm going to close that and just hit G, G for giant, it repeats your last action. That's a really handy tip there. Okay, I'm happy with my can so far. Well, now I need to pull, I need to pull this in a bit. So I'm going to go faces. If I grab those faces, if I come around the back, oh, I've gone and grabbed some faces at the back. Hmm. That can be a bit frustrating. Sometimes you might just want to grab, say, some front faces here, and you notice, oh, let's grab the back ones too. Now, to get just the faces at the, from your view, viewing angle, you can double click the very first button on the left hand side, the select tool, which is also Q, double click that, and it gives you lots of options. What we want to do is click that very first one, camera base selection, turn that on. Now I'm not going to close it just yet. I want to keep it open because I want to turn it off again very shortly. So doing that, see that only selects the front. Notice that? So now I can come in here and grab those top ones and I can feel pretty secure that it hasn't grabbed anything else. Fantastic. Okay, so now I'll turn that off actually because I don't need that and I'll just close it. And all I want to do is bring that down. So I'll hit W to move. And in my Y axis, which is my green up and down axis, Y, bring that down a bit. Yeah, maybe a bit more. You know what? I'm going to hit R to scale it. And not X or Y, but I want to do a uniform scale. So it's going to be the middle one, not just the Y, these little squares. Uniform scaling is the very center one. So I'm left click holding it and bringing that in a little bit. See that? Scaling all those in or out. Oh, I'll bring those in a bit. Yeah, neat. I'm happy with that. Yeah, so far my little can's looking pretty good. Some of those edges around the top there are looking pretty sort of sharp. I'd hate to cut my lip on that. So double click those. Scale them in a little bit, and W, and I'm going to move them down a little bit. Do you know what? I'm going to grab these edges here. I'm going to scale them out a bit just to make that, or in a little bit, W, move them down a bit. Maybe grab these ones. Ah, uh, these ones, whoops. Okay. And pull them in. I'm happy with that. And the bottom one, I'm happy with the way that is. Okay, so now let's carry on because we're not here for the modeling process. We're here to learn UV mapping. So Q, what we want to do next is I'm going to just move that to one side so as we can see our UV editor window when I open it. I'm going to close that. So in the top menu, along the very top, you've got UV. Click UV, UV editor. Here's our UV editor. Now, before I go any further, what's important to understand here is that um, all the actual the UV space that we're interested, this is UVs, right? You've got um, U and V, okay? 
it goes from 0 in the center to 1 and 0 left and right to 1 so it goes 0 0.1, 0 0.2 increments up to 1 and this would be negative 1 and negative 1 down okay so this is positive and that's positive so we're interested in keeping it all inside our positive space here that's where the final um, layout has to take place once you've finished moving all your bits and pieces all of these might be all over here for example you have to make sure you place them all into your space inside the top right corner now I can show you that quickly and here is your UV space get a bit in, better indication okay so everything needs to be inside the top right box because it goes X, W and Y, both the positive one. There's no negatives. See, these are all negatives. There's a negative in there, but these are both positives. So we want the positive space. That's our working area for when we actually export out of this uh, flattened UV space into Photoshop. Photoshop, when we do the export, only recognizes this area here the export okay we'll close that for now and we'll carry on minimize that so back inside our UV editor now what we need to do here is one we need to cut our little edges so as we can create what are called um, uh, shells these are actual shells we can move those around and then we need to flatten each one okay now when I say flatten, we actually create what's called a, a map, a cylindrical map, a planar map, or a spherical map. They're the three, three main ones. You've also got um, camera based, but we're interested in these three at the moment. In particular, we'll be using the cylindrical because it is a cylinder shape. So let's go with that one first, and then later on we might use a planar. So let's stick, let's concentrate on the sides of the can okay so at the moment if I click that you notice it's coming right up and around the top there so I'm going to just come in here go to edge grab all these edges around here because this is where the top of my label will go okay and I'm going to do a cut just like a pattern mater cuts with this uh, pair of scissors we need to do a cut there, so I'll go in my UV editor, polygons, cut UV edges. See that? Polygons, cut UV edges, click cut. I'll do the same for the bottom. Double click to select the whole ring. Polygons, I could hit just G, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'll go cut UV edges again. Now I've got two cuts. And if I were to come back into my UV editor, right click and go shell, you notice now the shell, see that? You've got a shell, a shell, and a shell. That's because I've created a couple of cuts. So it's now separated those pieces. Now I want to do one more cut. Right down oh, into edge mode. Down the center here because I need to unfold it, remember? If I don't do a cut here, you won't be able to unfold it. So I'll grab that one. Polygons, cut. Okay, great. Now that I've got that, I can right click and go face. Grab all those faces that I'm interested in. Hit F, whoops, to focus. Bring it back over. See, I've got the whole lot. So now the magic, we need to go UV and which one planar or cylindrical we're going to go cylindrical okay I click cylindrical and you notice it's created this little gizmo okay I'm just going to move that over a bit it's created this little I like to call it a gizmo so if I click off of this anywhere that'll disappear it has created it's unwrapped it see you can see it there all right I can even move that right over to one side so it's created 
the sides that cylindrical shape and it's unwrapped it nicely for us which would be great whoa bring that back now what's important to understand here there's a couple of little tools that that are important to uh, use in the gizmo there's a couple of little boxes blue and red boxes that little red one if you click and hold that with your left mouse button you can actually wrap the gizmo around it further you see that you can go all the way around now right down the very bottom of the gizmo there's a little red T you see that little red T down there if you click that little T it allows you to move the gizmo and of course rotate it now I'm happy with it the way it is but I am going to rotate it just for the purpose of this see I've rotated it sideways okay but notice how in the UV editor it's actually changing the shape and obviously the ideal position is straight up and down there okay and then to get back in out of the um, the rotation and translation click that little T again now we're back in so I'm happy with the position of that one so we just created our first cylind cylindrical map great and I've moved it off to the side I've moved it to the side so as this is my actual wor working area in here I've moved this off to the side so as I can keep working on these ones if I want to I can easily right click this and go say shell and then scale it non-uniformly see that undo that now I can scale the whole lot uniformly by hitting R so I really need to bring it down a bit maybe even stretch it out a bit because ultimately we want to pack this inside that UV space we need to pack everything back inside here it's about making the best use of that little bit of real estate okay so we'll come a bit closer. Next up, let's take a look at our let's take a look at the top of the can. And you know what? Before we go any further, let's actually apply a texture to our can so we can better ascertain exactly what's happening here. So I'm just gonna right click, select the whole can, object mode, and if I go Windows render editors hypershade I've actually downloaded a uh, little texture that we can use as a reference and I'll show it to you before I actually grab it we're going to apply this little reference texture okay it's just a, a typical checker color checker with reference numbers and letters that we can utilize for referencing purpose of the actual image when supplied to it so I'm going to apply that. It's just a simple JPEG that I downloaded off the internet. I think I typed UV texture check checker inside um, Google. I can even show you UV. Whoops, UV texture checker, and it should come up with a whole bunch of examples. There we go. I go to images, of course, and I downloaded one of these. There's so many of them rather than making your own okay okay let's carry on so just gonna minimize that for now so inside right now we're inside the hyper shade okay how do we get there I'll show you one more time back out I'll actually close the UV editor just for a moment while we add that little texture I go window rendering editors hypershade now the hypershade window opens and it's quite big and it's quite daunting the first time you see it there's a lot happening in here but to be honest it's not that difficult okay we're going to start out with basics you can create your material textures on the left here your materials okay so what we're interested in is Maya and we're interested in surface okay and now on the right side you can pick which one you want um, now the most common one used is a blin or a lambert 
Lambert is not glossy, it's just a matte sort of a, a uh, texture. So we'll go with, say, because a Pepsi can is, it's a little bit shiny, isn't it? We'll go with a blin. I just click that once, and you notice something happened over here, and also up here. There's our material. It's a blin that we just created. We'll rename this over here, Material Viewer. We can name that, and we'll call that Pep. Actually, it's not a Pepsi texture for now. It's going to be just a... We'll just call it checker test pattern. There we go, we've renamed it. Over here it's renamed. Notice it's all grey. Well, we're going to change that soon. We're going to apply out that little texture that I, that checker that I got off the interesting net. Okay, so this one here, by the way, my as of Maya 2016, it's all node based in the um, inside the hypershade okay so we're interested in I'll just bring those out of the way what we're interested in by clicking this checker test pattern this is our top level over on the right side you've got a whole bunch of attributes and we're particularly interested in is the first one color and I could just click this and just pick any color like yellow changes it to yellow. I'll change that back to grey though because what we're interested in here is actually this little checker pattern which is our options. Okay so we click color the right side click that once and it brings up your create render node. Okay big word basically all we're interested in here is getting our file. We could use a checker by the way but I've already got the file, remember? So I want to use a file. I'm not interested in noise or oceans or water. There's so many, and there are a whole bunch of fun. There's wood, okay? There's a whole bunch down there, but just for now, we're interested in file because this will allow us to take our 2D texture file. Click that once, and you notice down here, here's place 2D texture. If we want to move the actual coordinates, the UV space of it, there's the file there, and it's coming out of our, you notice, out of the color channel up here. See that? So that's the connection. Okay, but for now, we're just interested in finding our actual file. So image name. If we click the little file icon, click that once, and now I've got to find my actual file. Hmm, this might take a bit of time. I'm going to go to Pictures, SAE Images, UV Mapping, and there it is there, and I'll click Open. It's placed it. Fantastic. That's what I'm after. Now, it still has not actually applied our little checker texture to our can. So to do that, first I need to, there's, mm, there's a few ways of actually applying it. Fairly simple. One, you could just middle mouse button drag onto the texture. Now you're not seeing anything here because I am uh, the actual resolution inside the main viewport. I've got it probably on number four is wireframe. Now the uh, keypad number five is shaded, basic shading. Number six is the one we're interested in which is textured. Now we can see it. So that was one way of doing it. I'm going to just undo that the other way you can apply it is by selecting your your actual object first and then you can right click on your new texture uh, material I'm right clicking and see it's got a sign material to selection I just dragged up let it go that's another way okay so there's multiple ways of doing things within Maya once again I could either middle mouse drag and drop it on right click assign okay so that's it with the um, hypershade for now so we'll just close that thank you hypershade hit F to focus on our coke can sorry Pepsi can by the way there's no product endorsements in this little tutorial we'll just call it a soda can yeah so let's move on so now we can we've got this little texture 
we can actually see things a little bit better in our UV editor. Notice it's actually applied it inside that, that space. It's not outside, so there you go. That's a good indication of where everything need, ne needs to sit. If I were to right click and go shell, click one of those shells, W to move, watch what happens in the top here if I move that shell around. See that? It's actually moving the UV space, isn't it? And what happens if I scale that? Whoa, see that? So this is what I mean by we want a fairly uniform scaling. So they're very similar size checkers. Okay, I'll move that over. Might even move that one up too. And maybe even scale it up. Okay, so now what I want to do is actually create, I'm going to grab this one here and I want to apply what's called a planar map. Remember our maps are up the top, UV. Planar map. We did cylindrical before. This time we're going to create a planar map. So if I go to the options of the planar map, and this is the one you tend to use the most as your planar maps. Go to the options. Now, what we want to do is project from which direction? Is it X, Y, or Z? Well, if you think about it, our can is standing for example, and we're looking down inside the can, so our eyesight or the direction would be up and down, so it would be the Y. So I'll change that to Y axis. I'll hit apply, and that's right, it's now applied it up and down in the Y. Okay, I'll close that. And you notice it's actually scaled it up to the full making full use of that UV space. Move that out. I'm going to right click, shell. I'm going to just scale it down a bit. It doesn't need to be that big. Put that up there for now. And let's do this one, which is the bottom. Okay, and exactly the same. I know it's also going to be in the Y. So I'll just hit planar map. Don't have to go to options. Let's now place one in the bottom. I'll move that out as well. I'll right click shell R to scale and scale it down about the same size. That's pretty darn good, maybe a little bit more. Have a look. What's also important here guys, see these little two one toggle shaded UV display. Notice one of them here is red, one of them's blue. Hmm. I look underneath, that's pretty good. Let's try and flip that. Now they're both blue. Okay, you really want them all to be the same color. Okay, that way the texture is facing in the same direction. Now also we do not want to have them overlapping each other like that. You want them all to be separate. Now we've got two more here. I'm just going to turn off the actual texture for a moment, turn it on and off with this button here. Okay. This one is obviously the lip or the ring around the edge there. And I'll just leave that the way it is. I, I don't mind that. It's not it's not a biggie. I will stretch it out a bit. Actually, no, this one here will be that one. And then there's one more. That one there. And scale that out. Okay, I'm going to turn that off. Good, so I'm going to take this one, move it over, scale it so I'm making good use of the UV space. Let's bring that in a bit more. Maybe move it over a bit. I try and leave a little bit of gap around the edges. Never take it directly to the edge. I like to have a bit of a gap. Bring this one over. Oops, got to scale that one down. It's overlapping. We'll 
boom, boom, boom. Bring it over a bit. Bring this one in two. Scale it down a bit. Move it over. This one, I'll even rotate that one because it might be able to sit quite nicely just in here. About there. Now ideally, I would actually, this top one, I would probably put a cut through here and then actually um, do, for example, another, probably a cylindrical map. We can even try that. Let's have a crack at that, shall we? First I'll do a cut. Let's have a look. Okay, it's just the two. So we'll do a cut, edge cut, there and there. And I'll go polygons, remember cutting, cut UVs. So there's that cut there now. If I grab the shell, grab those two, and I'm going to do a cylindrical map. See what we get. Okay, see that? It's now nicely laid out, but it's huge, isn't it? Once again, it's tried to take up the entire space. So it really is not, if you think about it, it's only a fairly small lip there. So I need to really bring that down. Scout it in. Then move it over. And rotate it. Because we're just thinking about UV space here. And ultimately, Ultimately, what you're trying to achieve is that it's a reference, so you need to understand what you are painting. If this is, for example, a character's face, you need to unwrap it so as you can define where the eyes are, what the nose is. So you'll see the nose and the mouth and the eyes. Because when you start painting, you need to have a good comprehension and understanding, you know, co a cognitive understanding of what you're painting. So I just know, okay, I know that's that top lip. This is the bottom lip. Being the bottom lip, I'm not going to really see the bottom of the can so much. So oh, I might scale it out a bit. Once again, notice over here, I've gone over the UV space there. I need to bring that in a bit. So I'm going to scale it down, move it up. Bring it in. Maybe even rotate that. Getting a little bit pedantic here, but hey, all good. Okay, I'm happy with that. See that? So if I right click UVs, by the way, before I go any further, you can actually move UVs around too. By right clicking going UVs, you can actually move them around individually. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to grab all those UVs. Now we need to export this as our 2D space as a texture file that we can open inside Photoshop. So we need to export it ready for opening in Photoshop. So to do that, we go polygons again. Once again, I've gone UV, right clicked here first, went UV, and I grabbed all the UVs. Polygons, UV snapshot right down the bottom and this is where we'll save the file to it's going to put it inside I'm going to go to documents Maya and wherever it is your pro projects are um, I'll put this one just for now inside default images and I'll give it a name I'll call it um, solder can texture save that now there it is it'll be inside there's my address now I'm going to change this to 512 which is a higher resolution okay some games might go up to 1024 256 is too low I feel so I'm going to go to 512 keep aspect ratios on great color value this is important this is going to give me the actual wireframe you'll notice when I open it inside Photoshop it'll be white at the moment I could change this to gray or to let's try green just for the purpose of this exercise so we can better 
you can actually see that it did work. Mm, image file format, I'm going to change that to JPEG. It could be Photoshop, but I'm going to go with JPEG. Leave that, 0 to 1, and then click OK. Now, you don't see anything, but saved file down the bottom. Close my UV editor, minimize Maya, let's open Photoshop. Now what have I been working on here? I'm going to go File New, um, 512, 512 I think it was, there we go, and then I'm going to go File, Open, and I know it's in my Maya, Maya Projects Default, Anti Images, Soda Can Texture, there it is open and there it is okay so this is my reference so within Photoshop I need to now find my Pepsi can my Pepsi can lid and base and my sides so to do this to start working notice how the very first layer it's locked this is your layers inside Photoshop it's locked I need to create at least one layer on top that's unlocked all right I can hide this one Okay, so let's try and find our Pepsi can. So I'll go File, Open, or you could probably import it straight in, but now if I go uh, Pictures, if my memory serves me well, UV Mapping, and Pepsi can Top, Pepsi can Label. Let's try that. Okay, if I hit um, since so Command A for all, I'm on a Mac by the way, it should be Control A for select all, Control C. And if I go back to my soda can texture, I hit Control V for paste. Now it's huge, so I need to rescale it. So con Control T, and then I can grab, or hold and shift, I can actually scale it down to the appropriate sort of size here. That's a bit better because I'm trying to place it into there. Now, notice I cannot actually see underneath. So, if I wanted to, this layer, I could bring down the opacity a bit. Now I can sort of see a bit better. I'll just drag it out. I'm happy with that. Maybe hit enter to get out of transform mode. You have to be inside the actual box. I could bring up that now. Boink. Great. See that? I'm just changing the opacity of the layer. Okay, let's find the lid. So I can actually go back to a can now and say bye bye to that one. And so open. And Pepsi can top. Open. And I could probably change this one rather than a, a rectangular marquee. I've got elliptical. And I think it's shift or is it control? Whoops. Shift. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it is to get the, um, the circle rating out from the very center. That's it. Okay. So, happy with that. I'll hit Control C to copy it. Go back to my can, hit Control V. Actually, I'll create a new layer. So they're on separate layers. Control V, there it is inside my layer. Control T to scale. Scale it down. Scale it down. Down a bit more. I want to actually reduce the opacity so that I can see it. A bit more than that. I'm hoping that this is the top one, by the way. Move it over a bit. Okay. And enter. And do you know what? If this is the bottom, rather than dropping another, what would be a bit of a strange can if I've actually got a, um, 
a ring pull on both sides. I'll create a new layer and I'm just going to paint it grey just for the sake of this, just to show you that we can also paint so, something like that. Go to my paintbrush tool and paint. And I'll even paint these ones too. They're the same colour. I'll up the opacity. These are the um, variables up here. That's better. Don't want to get too close. Okay. Changing my brush size. Okay, now I can paint anywhere outside that, by the way, as long as I'm not overlapping the other parts. Okay. And do you know what? I might even give this a little signature. New layer. And I'm going to maybe put some typing in here. What colour? We're going to go for maybe a blue. Coke blue. And I'll say Mick was here. Okay, let's get politically correct. Here. I'll change that to about 24. Oh, drop that down to 20. And we'll even change the. Oh, that's way too small, isn't it? 20. It's better. Actually, I don't even like. Waste a bit of time here, but why not? We're nearly finished, guys. There we go. 22. Happy with that. Bottom of my Coke can. Go down to this one. Sure, it's inside, it is good. Oops, whoops. Okay, guys, I'm happy with that. So, now what I do is grab these three, and I'm just going to go layer, merge layers, that's those three. They're all one piece, I could probably turn this one off if I wanted to. And I'll go file. I'll just save that. Actually, I'll go save as, change from Photoshop to say JPEG. And I have to remember where it is. Right now it's inside images, inside Maya, remember? So I'll call this Cocan Final. Save. Yep. Minimize that. Now back inside Maya, Boom. Now we want to change that texture to our to our texture of our Pepsi can. So right click, select, make sure we have the whole lot selected. Click this one even. And once again we need to go back into the hypershade. How do we do that? Windows, rendering editors, hypershade. It'll bring up our little hypershade. Remember, there it is. And there's our checker texture. But we want to change the color. So over here, click that little one. Oh, here's our checker texture. We need to change that. Click that. And this time I want to use boom, 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 documents. I'm just going to find it. Uh, default it was. Inside images, text can final, apply that, and there we go. Okay, if I come inside here, I've now got. Oh, Mick was here. There you go, guys. Nice looking little Coke can. I could create a ground plane, I could even control 
D to duplicate it. Maybe put one on the side. Move it down. A little bit of fun. And D. Rotate them a bit. Might even create a ground plane. Which is just a simple primitive plane. Drag it down. Drag this one down. Drag this one down. Okay guys, um, hope you enjoyed that. It was a whole bunch of fun and yeah, have a go at uh, trying a few different renders. Renders of uh, texturing, sorry. If I do a quick little render, this little button, and there we go. Of course, that's with default lights, but you get a general idea. Okay, bring that down a bit. Ah, neat. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it was UV un wrapping and texturing in Maya 2016. My name is Michael Banks and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See ya!